Melee is a hard game. While playing a character that isn't your main is a great way to just have fun, some people aren't practicing Mars chain grabs on FD is a bit. Putting hours of effort into a character to counteract certain matchups is a goal many players set out to accomplish, but it's a road that many players have taken detours off of. You can check out our accompanying videos for closely related topics, but today we'll be giving a stage to one of the hardest things to do in tournament, and we'll be talking about players who dual main characters. We'll be giving bonus points and high regards to players who use characters to overcome their weakest points, all while performing even better in tournament because of it. This part is completely meaningless but somehow necessary, and here's our top 10 SSBM dual mains. Shouts out to Smash Turtle for the video idea, subscribe for weekly Melee Top 10s, and number 10, Cobol, Fox, and Marth. Cobol's been around a long time, like getting 25th at Pound 2 in 2007 a long time. While he recently dipped into the 50s range in 2019, Cobol has been in the top 30 debate since literally Pound 2 in 2007. That said, an Achilles heel has been present in Cobol's game for a little bit longer than it should be, and by 2015, Cobol's green sword guy was pulled up to the major leagues. The problem with Cobol's fox was... fox. Cobol had taken a couple hard losses to up and coming fox mains along the way, and it just never looked like he was really in the running against some of the better spacey players. But by the summer of Smash in 2015, Cobol was stunting the Marth way more often than just the sometimes appearance at the local. Cobol's Marth has been up to bat a decent chunk of times, taking games and sets off of a tough list of spacey players. He has shown his Marth is not just a Hail Mary pick, but a character he has built up to cover previous holes in the game plan. We feature Cobol's Marth as our first entry, as while we do think the Marth is still building up to what it could be, it's a great showing of dual mains and using your own blood's hate for a character as a counterpick. Number 9, Nun, Falcon, and Ganon. This list has rare inclusions for players who have a character just to hurt someone's feelings, but goddamn, don't know if there's another purpose for Nun's Ganon besides gameplay emotional abuse, but we also don't know if we could have ever left it off this list. Nun's Ganon, while making more appearances against floaties, does sometimes feel like a way just to make fun of hugs in the stream setup, but that doesn't mean it's not a real character. While Kage the Warrior had ruled over the land of Canada as premier Ganon prior, Nun's Ganon, while not even being the lead act, would kinda claim that one from the Warrior. Listen, we're not here to discuss Canadian power dynamics, but we can assure you that whatever made Nuns Ganon as f***ed up as it turned out to be, surely wants to see the world burn, and whenever the Ganon is on stage, we have a feeling of its intentions. Number 8, Pew Pew, Marth and Fox. NorCal has been home to some incredibly talented melee players, and one of the heads of Cerberus that is NorCal Melee is the incredibly consistent player that Pew Pew is. While his Fox isn't the immediate character that comes to mind, he has time and time again shown that What's that, Lassie? What's that, Lassie? Pew Pew's a Marth main. Someone's calling me a fucking idiot in the YouTube comments? But Lassie, did they, did they know that Pew Pew thinks he's a dual main? Are you gonna argue about Pew Pew to Pew Pew in the Austin Melee comments, Lassie? I didn't think so. Good dog. <clears throat> anyway, Pew Pew, NorCal, good player, yeah. Pew Pew's Marth has been relevant even prior to the days of pivot tippering HBox, but his Fox would get its first real share of the spotlight at EVO 2014. Playing the mid-tier among mid-tier heroes, Pew Pew would find himself against Amsa and in a matchup Marth players love to bitch about. Y'all can endlessly argue about how Yoshi Marth isn't that bad for Marth in the comments, but at EVO 2014, Pew Pew's Marth wouldn't even see the character select screen versus Amsa. Amsa is and was someone who had endless amounts of experiences and matchups most people had barely ever touched, and against similar players his level, tons of people had crumbled and looked lost. In a rather dominant set, and in one of the first big opportunities ever given to it, Pew Pew's Fox would take a strong 2-0 over Amsa. Later in the tournament, Pew Pew's Fox would reappear and play the entirety of a set against M2K, where the labeled god would scream in excitement after a close 2-1. Pew Pew's Fox would remain as frequent as he would run into the specific matchups, such as Pikachu, Yoshi, and sometimes Marth and Puff. In loser's bracket of SmashCon 2016, Amsa would fall to Shroomed in winners, and yet again a dominant 3-0 win from Pew Pew to be eliminated by two-thirds of the faces of NorCal Melee. In their next run-in, Amsa would turn those numbers around and take his first recorded win over Pew Pew, 3-0 in his favor. While it got noticed initially for its work against mid-tiers, Pew Pew's Fox has frequented tournaments and netplay setups everywhere, and has allowed Kevin Toy to stay at the head of his game with having to worry less about the double jump armor and getting gimped at zero. And continuing with NorCal, number 7, S-Fat, Fox, and Falco, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Number 7, Shroomed, Marth, and Sheik. After taking some fat losses leading up to 2014, the person who had been pushing Dr. Mario for all these years had enough of fighting the mid-tier war he was a part of. 
While Shroom would ultimately make the switch from Doc to Sheik and see a boosted slew of results almost after, there was a character who had gotten a couple shots in this time that was left off the final roster. During this time of soul searching, Shroom's Marth would make somewhat trial appearances, mostly against Spaces and Ices in his time of starting Sheik. As Shroom's Sheik blossomed more and more into the top 20 to 30 range and stayed steady in, the Marth would turn out to be not just a temporary help, but a full time tool of part of Shroom's characters. While he's been mocked for his inability to regrab off of Sheik's tech chase on Spaces, who needs to down throw Spaces when you can up throw them with Marth? Shroom's addition of Marth back to the squad has really routed out the tools that were being searched for back in the days of getting bad charactered with Doc. Number 6. KDJ, Sheik and Marth, and Fox. The Carl Yaskremski of New England Melee, Korean DJ played his entirety of his career supporting Boston Melee scene, and while he obviously dropped off later, he at least helped to get it to the places it's in now. Korean DJ dates back to winning the Amateurs Bracket at MLG New York in 2006, to finally taking money matches off the top players he's been money matching incessantly a half a year later, to being a staple of the top 10 players he was clawing at only a full year later. While most players on this list would become a top player and then start to craft a second pillar to stabilize himself, KDJ entered the field just uneven as fuck and sometimes going three different characters in three game sets. His Sheik, Marth, and Fox have always and will always be the lineup we will associate with our OG's OG and KDJ was absolutely no joke in his era. Korean DJ takes a high spot on our list for being one of the first recognized top players to use multiple characters to cover his matchups and because of his rise to the top being so closely associated with how quick he got good. Number 5, M2K, Sheik and Marth, and Fox. KDJ and M2K's upbringings in the MLG days shared plenty of parallels, but in the times where Korean DJ would put down his weapon, Mewtwo King would continuously be part of the conversation at the top throughout so many different eras. M2K's Marth and Sheik have been tormenting and beating down up and coming players for over a decade. Mewtwo King really did set the standard for what we can expect from a dual main, because at any point his transitions between characters could be completely seamless. He could go from dominating the best Falcon player ever with his Sheik, to immediately zero to deathing a Spacey with his Marth the next game, with all of it seeming like repetition in muscle memory. While it had been a part of the initial come up, Mewtwo King's Fox would be reserved for ultimate desperation scenarios for quite a while, but finally by Big House 3 it would start to really show its head again, defeating Hungrybox twice to win the tournament, and similar spotty results in the years after. Mewtwo King will always be a constant staple in what we imagine of a dual main, but we do hold it back at the 5th spot because of not full coverage of all the matchups. If you can make M2K rethink the character he should be using, you might just be on the path to defeating him, but you'd be ignoring the countless top 15 players along the way who felt hopeless against whatever members of Mewtwo King's squad was being put up against them. Number 4, Mango, Fox, and Falco. To be honest, where Alston Melee's spot for Mango is usually easy, this one was kinda hard to measure up against the others. We've given the biggest ups possible to the people who have implemented characters to complete their game, but Mango is kind of an outlier here, showing the potential to beat practically anyone with whatever space he is feeling hot. While usually going Fox against Hbox is the one that comes to mind, Mango's counterpicks have way more weight in how he's feeling that day as opposed to desperate need for different options. That said, Mango has shown the ability to switch characters throughout a tournament and beat the best players possible in grand finals and everything on the line scenarios, all while seamlessly adjusting to wave dash timings. Both characters have been around since the early days of thoughts of switching off of Puff, and both characters have been beating top players and winning events since then. While he might not dual main in the most conventional way compared to the other players listed, he is still more than included in the conversations because of both characters doing everything from calculated neutral to literally why the f did he go for that. Mango takes a lower spot than the ones after him because we believe if you were to remove one of their characters, there's a chance they wouldn't have been the same player entirely, and we think Mango is a little removed from that thinking. That said, while some pea brain idiots might amount the switches to both being spacies, the ability to perform at the top level and win events with different characters shouldn't ever be understated because they both have guns and a good back air. Number 3, PPMD, Falco and Marth. By 2010, Dr. PP had officially become a part of the conversation for the 5 best players in the world who were a decent chunk above the rest of the pack. After winning ROM 3, Winter Game Fest, and Pound 5 back to back to back, beating M2K, Mango, Armada, and Hungrybox, PPMD had seriously skyrocketed from just a decent Falco in North Carolina to someone dare taunting Mango to win Grand Finals. 
At Apex 2012, PP wouldn't have the performance he'd call a competitive peak, but his earlier matchups where he was testing Marth looked pretty promising. At Zenith 2012, after losing to M2K in winter semis, PP would run through Hungrybox and Chudat to face M2K again in Grands. In their winner set, Mewtwo King had counterpicked FD the second game, which was met with a 4 stock over PP. This time in Grands, when Mewtwo King counterpicked FD, PP would switch to Marth and have a much closer game, with it ultimately ending by a straight dare from M2K. Even so, PP would go on to win two sets in a row and take first place at Xena 2012 with a small helping hand from the Marth. A little less than a year later at Apex 2013, PP's Marth would be yet again thrust into action in Grand Finals, this time against Armada after defeating M2K twice with Falco. Against Peach, PP would go Marth, and while the set had shines of light for the character's future, PP would lose a set 3-1. In the years after, PP's Marth would go from a character being called upon in Grands to a character that could be pulled out against someone he'd been going Falco against forever and suddenly turn the tables. With the help of his Marth rounding out the player that PPMD is, he would become a back-to-back -back Apex champion, taking 2014 and 2015, in which the latter of the two was the biggest melee tournament at the time. At the top level, PP showed thought-driven counterpicks and almost always felt like he was switching characters because of an understanding of an interaction or a new read on a neutral option, and rarely out of the feeling of anxiousness or stubbornness that becomes so common with many melee players' emotions. Number 2. Plup, Sheik, and Fox rip Samus Continuing on and providing the full context from a previous video, after Plup's rough losses at Apex 2015, he would trade his charge shots for needles and start playing Sheik much more than he did prior. Only one year later at EVO, his Sheik was already seeing the biggest stages possible and netting him bigger opportunities than his Samus did previously. But approaching the top of the new character has its own special difficulties and while Plup found himself climbing again, there were clearly new obstacles in the way to the summit. Plup's first couple shots at HBox were plenty promising, but with their chic puff sets becoming more common, unfortunately so is the distance being shown. HBox would work Plup chic in top 8 sets for a solid chunk of its first years of life. While Plup had plenty of experience dropping everything for something else, this clearly wasn't what was needed now. In the other departments, Plup chic could help provide exactly what Plup was looking for. Consistency. The days of random back-to-back -back bad losses were much more rare, and the days of Plup being a staple in the top 8s were even more common than before. But whether it was going to be for HBox and only HBox, something had it to be added to the formula. Dreamhack Austin 2017 would be the debut of Plup's Fox in the scenarios he needed it most, although not necessarily coming out the gate swinging. After losing the first two games against HBox and Sheik Puff, Plup would counterpick his Fox Game 3 where it kinda lost pretty decisively, but throwing yourself in the fire is for sure the first step. But the next three sets they played weren't pretty. Plop would stick it out with Fox throughout all of them, but wouldn't take a game in any of them, and by the 7th or 8th game lost in a row, he was trying Sheik again just to make sure it was bad as he remembered, and it was. Although some of their sets and regionals in Florida weren't as bad as the main stage one, Plup was continuously getting dogged where it mattered most. At DreamHack Atlanta 2017, HBox and Plup would meet in winter semis for the fifth time that year. While Plup's first stock would appear to be a bit of the same, it would be the only stock that game to feel like it, and Plup would go on to three stocking Hungrybox game one and being able to keep up in the games after. In a Game 5 last stock scenario, with Plup down a decent bit of percent, he would eventually claw his way back and find a stray hit back hair that would end HBox's winner's life and take his first set with Fox against HBox at a major event. In the grand final set that came after, Plup would get his much needed revenge from the sets prior and 3-0 HBox in a manner that had other Fox players drooling. Plup's Fox would end up being a much needed piece in competing at the very top echelon of Melee and giving Plup the bracket placements he was always capable of. At Genesis 5, Plup would come full circle and take home first place at a legendary Super Major, with his Fox playing every game of the Grand Finals set. Plup has fully completed his game plan at the top level, and while the Samus had to die for his sins, his current characters have patched the holes needed. And number 1, Armada, Peach and Fox. At the end of 2015, Armada was finally ranked the number one player in the world. At the beginning of 2014, Armada, the number two player in the world, was suddenly looking more fragile than ever. Having a Peach and Young Link icon from being forced to play the mid-tier against Hungrybox's Puff, there was suddenly a new problem on the horizon much closer to home. The Beast Tournament Series was an event in Armada's hometown, co-organized and TO'd by the man himself. 
In the fourth iteration of the tournament, after Leffen lost to Ice in winners and ran through the losers bracket, Armada would play Leffen in a classic European Grand Finals and with a bit of animosity in the air with Leffen being evidence.zipped in the year prior. Leffen and Armada would play Fox Peach as expected, but the outcome wouldn't be. Leffen would win the first set 3-0, and continuing with surprises, Armada would switch to Fox the second set. This was the first light Armada's Fox had ever gotten since a throwaway game at Genesis 1, but its first stock back wasn't the most pretty. Side being off the stage almost immediately and meeting a taunt from Leffen right after, Armada's counterpick was questioned off the bat. After going down two games, he would be able to take the third, but losing the set 3-1 after an FD counterpick from Leffen for the victory of the tournament. The player who was making Peach look like a flying robot mech monstering over competition suddenly looked a little lost. At Republic of Fighters 3, the fifth biggest European event just a few months later, Armada's Fox would be thrown into the pit of EU Fox players. In winner's quarters he would beat Prof 2-0, then Amsa, not Amsa, off stream of presumably Peach Yoshi and yet again be up against Leffen and Grands. Sticking with Fox, while the first stock looked eerily similar to the B set, the first game did not. Armada quickly showed how practiced he was with the character and would clutch a last stock scenario after being patient in reading a ledge dash up smash from Leffen. Leffen's FD counterpick was clearly not the same vibe from before, and the following two stock and three stop dubs would net Armada the winner's final set and a stark difference from just a few months prior. But once he beat Ice in loser's finals, Leffen would come back stronger than ever. The six games played after in Grands could possibly make a combo video for TSM, and as implied, Leffen would win both sets without a game being taken for Armada. He'd stay with the Fox throughout all of it, not cracking and switching, and while their set count was 2-2 in Fox Ditto's now, Leffen had won both those tournaments. After a second place finish at Kings of Cali 4 to Mango again, EVO 2014 would be the last big tournament of the summer featuring all of the now top six players a cut above the rest. Armada, seated second, would defeat Fly Amanita in winner's quarters and play HBox in winner's semis. EVO is dumb and we hate them endlessly for making every set best of three besides finals, but when Armada and HBox play Young Link Fox, we kinda have to be thankful sometimes. After Armada won the first game over Hungrybox's Fox, he'd switch back to Puff and win the next two games along with the set. After defeating Axe and PP in losers, he'd play HBox again, this time in a best of five, where the standing Puff made would scream to the crowd like a lead singer after winning game five. A couple months later, and Leffen and Armada would finally play again, and yet again in EU, where Armada this time would pick Peach on the character select screen. Armada would win the set decisively with a 3-0, but the tournament wasn't the best showing from Leffen overall, creating one of our favorite rage clips to this day. The Fox Armada was training with multiple EU debuts still hadn't re-debuted on US soil, and while Armada's results were starting to realign, people questioned whether the Fox still existed. At Beast 5, one full year after the cracks were starting to show, Armada, still playing Peach, would get second losing twice to Leffen, but beating Mango along the way. Paragon Orlando 2015 was just a week after, and it would yet again be seated to expose the crack in Armada. Playing HBox in winter semis, Hungrybox would win the first two painful games of Floaty v Floaty, with Armada going Peach again for the first time in forever. Losing two games and forced out of necessity, Armada would counterpick Fox on Stadium that would lead to a tight battle last dock situation. On HBox's Dreamland counterpick, Armada's patient approach to the Puff matchup would work well and win yet again another last dock game, but at game 5, HBox wouldn't miss the rest this time and would take the set. Meeting Leffen in loser's quarters, Armada would be faced with the two people who very well could have birthed this Fox. Armada would try the Peach game one, and after getting two stock, would revert back to the Fox, and the first game was looking rough. Leffen was on the verge of four stocking Armada, but Armada would grab two stocks and some pride before dropping the game. Now being down two games, the third would be more than an answer from Armada, and while Leffen dropped the four stock in the game prior, Armada wouldn't. Leffen's FD counterpick would look just as bad for him, getting hard three stocked on the stage he'd always gone to in the Fox Ditto. The last stock of the final game would be an insane feat with Leffen well over 100% and Armada barely touched. Through thunderous combos, shine nares, and phantom jabs, Leffen would take the fifth game and eliminate Armada at fifth place, but the win was down to the wire and finally not decisive for either player. After Paragon 2015, Armada had fully proven that his Fox was not just a desperation pick that it once felt like a Genesis 1, but a character that would become a staple not just for Armada, but Fox in general. 
Apex 2015 would be a full display of what it was really capable of, defeating Hungrybox, Mango, and Leffen, ultimately losing to PPMD at 2.30 in the morning. The two players who had made Armada look like he was lost in game would take multiple losses to Armada, now fully claiming the dual main moniker, but with the others clearly still keeping up. Once the player who was losing badly to Leffen on home turf and Hungrybox while attempting to pull as many bombs as possible, at the end of 2015, Armada was finally the number one player in the world. Armada's Fox was the real answer to his prior competitive problems, and it would be a staple in the matchups that come to mind when thinking of Armada's legacy and the competition on the way. We feature the story of Armada's characters blooming and the rise of dominance they became, and just thinking of the difference as the Peach player struggling to keep up to both of Armada's characters leading the pack really outlines it for us. Throughout Melee's history, people have been extremely vocal about the woes of playing matchup, but this list features many players who rounded out their game plans in ways that made them look invincible because of so. At the end of the day, we can make things as complex as possible and make event storylines bigger than life, but we all enter tournaments for a very simple reason, to beat the player sitting next to us.